What's up guys, today we talk about the history of the Rode A35, which is one of my favorite cameras. It's probably also your favorite since you are watching this video. The Rode A35 is a German-made compact rangefinder film camera. It's one of the most successful film camera models in history. From 1966 to the late 1990s, over 2 million units had been sold, which is an astonishing number. First of all, let's talk about the father of Rode A35. His name is Heinz Waske. Waske was a German engineer. In the 1960s, he saw the great success of the Olympus pan cameras. So he noticed a huge demand for compact cameras. At that point, he was working for a German company called Working. He made the first prototype of the Rode A35 during his spare time. In order to make the camera as small as possible, he did not adopt the traditional shutter system such as the leaf shutter and the focal plane shutter system. He put the shutter control part in the camera body while the shutter lamellus inside the lens, which was a highly innovative design. He was very excited and showed his prototype to his boss, but his boss did not want to make cameras anymore and he was mad because he thought Vasquez did not focus on his job and so lay off him. After losing his job, Vasquez approached Leica and Kodak. Hopefully they could mass produce his newly designed camera. But like his ex-employer, Leica and Kodak were not interested in his invention. Finally, in a job interview for Lole, Vasquez demonstrated his prototype and Lole liked his design and wanted to produce this camera immediately. They slightly modified the original design and add some role elements such as these two dials which look very similar to the twin lens of the role flex. Back then, role was not capable of making the entire camera so they have to use parts from the other German companies. For instance, the lens was made by Carl Zeiss and the light meter was made by Gosen. The Rolle 35 was introduced in 1966 in Photokina, which is a trade fair in Europe for camera and photographic industries. It was an instant success. One fun fact is that the first batch of the Rolle 35, basically the ones made in the first year, had an unusual signature made in Germany by Rolle, Kampur, Gosen, and Carl Zeiss. But from then on, it became just made in Germany by Rolle. Kind of like Audi, it used to be Octo Union and then it just became Audi. The price for the Rolle 35 was about $190 back then, equivalent to $1,500 today. So it was a pretty expensive camera, but Rolle sold a large number of them, which was their main source of revenue for a long time. To lower the production cost, Lole built a factory in Singapore in 1971 and continued to make the Rolle 35 in Singapore. Most Lole 35 is using the TSA 40mm f3.5 lens produced by Carl Zeiss, but the rear version has the S Sena lens, which is also 40mm f3.5 produced by Snyder. Besides the original model, Rolle also launched a budget model, which is the B35 or 35B. They got rid of the signature design of the two dials on the front and put them into the lens. B35 has a Chiota 40mm lens, which is not as good as the TSA lens. Later, there were some variants of the B35, such as the 35 LED, which is basically the B35 with LED signal lights inside the viewfinder and the C35 which is the B35 without the built-in light meter. You can rarely see any C35 in the market because there were only a very small number of them being made. In 1974, Rolle launched a new model based on the original Rolle 35 which is the Rolle 35S. The biggest improvement is the lens the 35S got the 40mm sauna lens, which has a bigger aperture of f2.8. One fun fact is that the Contest T2 is using the sauna lens as well. Meanwhile, Rolle was still 
making the original model but changed its name to Rolex 35T. In 1979, the 35SE and 35TE were introduced. Basically, they were the 35S and 35T with a LED signal light inside the viewfinder. Over time, Rolex was going downhill because they have very little innovation. They were pretty much selling the same camera for over three decades. At that time, the camera industry was experiencing a shift from mechanical to electronic. Rolex certainly made some efforts to catch up with that trend, but it was very unsuccessful. They make a prototype with some modern features, but never mass produce it. The Singapore factory eventually closed in 1981. Since then, there were some special luxurious editions being made, such as a gold-plated version and the flamboyant Rolex Classic made of titanium. Overall, the Rolex 35 has a glorious past, but still it did not help Rolex survive the digital age. But one good thing is that there are tens of thousands of Rolex 35 available, if not millions, in the second-hand market. So Rolex fans worthwhile can still enjoy film photography using this camera. That's all for today's video. I hope you find it interesting. I will see you next time.